Hi, today I want to talk about why I purchased the Sony A6100. I'm going to give you 12 reasons why I did it. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here it is, the Sony A6100. Now the look and feel of this camera is very similar to the A6000, but don't let the look fool you because there's a lot more features in this camera than the A6000. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna give you 12 reasons why I actually purchased this camera. Number one, of course, is the price. Now originally when Sony came out with this uh, A6100, it was about thousand Canadian dollars plus tax. I thought that was a little bit too much. So I, you know, waited. So there was an opportunity that came about. I looked up Kijiji, there was a guy who was selling this A6100 for under $800. And it included warranty as well as uh, low shutter count. So it was under a thousand. So I thought, yep, that's, that's about right. I want that camera. And so it is, the price. For this amount of feature, price is important. So the price uh, was able to match the features. So yeah. I got this camera because of number one, the price. Number two, of course, is the flip out screen, as you can see here. Now, I did own the A6000, A6300, and A6500, the, and I sold it off. And the reason why I sold it off because, well, I, you know, I needed a vlogging camera back in those days, right? Didn't have this type of style of screen. So I thought, okay, you know what? A5000 was good enough. So there we go. The flip up screen was very helpful. So that, that's one of the reasons why I purchased this camera. Number two. Number three, of course, is that it has a mic jack. Okay, there it is, it's a mic jack. Now that's one thing I didn't like about the A5000. It didn't have a mic jack. This one does have it. Yeah, there we go. We have a mic jack now and a flip out screen, right? So that's number three, having a mic jack. Number four is that it's autofocus is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, Sony has come a long way and their autofocus I think is even better than Canon. You know, for me, as long as they're able to capture uh, my eye and my face quite quickly, I'm okay with that. You know, whether it's Canon or Sony, even Fujifilm, right? I'm okay with that. It's fine. But yeah, good to know that it has amazing autofocus feature uh, and animal detection too. Be able to detect the animal's eye and all that stuff don't care so much about it i do have a cat so yeah maybe i'll take my cat photo from time to time or even its video so yeah maybe that's going to be important however that is number four reason why i think uh i you know i persuaded to buy this camera number five very important it's actually this is one of the most important one it is that it has a clean hdmi output because i was thinking you know i want another uh studio camera i'm actually filming with the a 5100 uh, Sony camera and the problem with the A5100 is that it had an overheating issue right but I was able to resolve that by hooking up to a, uh, a monitor recorder as well as a uh, external power so the overheating issue is not a problem anymore but I did want a feature in a newer camera and that is a clean HMI output I think the the Sony A6000 has that as well. So the A6100 also has a clean HDMI output. Sur surprisingly, the Canon uh, M50 does not. I think they have something recently that's like, yes, it has clean HDMI, but the it's not a 1080p format. So if you're gonna use it as a studio camera um, and you want a clean HDMI, I think the Sony A uh, cameras does have that feature and you know, in all their 6000 series, which is great. And even the A5100 uh, has that as well. So it's great. So number six is the low light feature on this camera. This APS-C camera, I think is one of the best, uh, if not the best uh, ISO performance. It can do 32,000 ISO, uh, but I wouldn't stretch that far. I think about uh, 12,800 ISO is, is pretty clean on this camera. So yeah, if you're filming at night, you would not be disappointed. However, if you really want a you know, low light uh, camera, maybe you want to go for the A7 III or the A7S II. But uh, you know, hopefully Sony will come up with the A7S III soon, then that would be a beast, right? Anyway, that's another uh, topic we'll talk about in the future. Number seven, yes, the unlimited recording. This camera now can do unlimited recording. 
Uh, the Sony um, previous generation, like the A6000, the A5100, the A5000, the A63 or A6500, they only can do up to 30 minutes. But I think recently Sony A6100, A6400, and even the A6600 all can do uh, unlimited recording, which is amazing because that means you don't have to worry about, oh no, it's going to run out in 30 minutes and then, you know, you got to press it again. So this camera, you can keep on going and going as long as you have the battery that can support it. Now, I would recommend if you're going to do a long shot, like for over an hour, obviously you need an external power to do that. I did purchase a uh, external AC adapter for my A5100 that I'm recording right now. And I'm ca I can use that for my A6100. So if you decide to do a long recording over an hour, then definitely invest in an AC adapter, a dummy MPFW50 dummy battery that allow you to connect to the AC adapter or the USB power bank, okay? Talking about battery, number eight. Yes, this Sony A6100 and even the A6400 are using these type of batteries. Now, people think it's a disadvantage. For me, it is not. And I think it's an advantage that Sony kept this battery because I have lots of these, right? It's almost pennies now. Um, if you get the third party, which works as good as the, you know, brand, uh, Sony brand uh, and if you have you know five six of these amazing right you can you know can shoot each time you know three four hundred shots and it can record for close to an hour worth I think that's that's more than adequate I don't think you'll be recording continuous and like I said if you're gonna con uh, record it continuously you might as well get in a, a dummy battery with an AC adapter then you'll be fine so yeah I love the fact that they actually have their original battery and have a lo lot of those and I can use it on my Sony a6100 number nine number nine is the overheating issue yes so I think the a6100 might have resolved that I haven't test it extensively but I knew, know for a fact that it's definitely better than the A6000, A6300 and maybe even the A6500. Um, so something uh, Sony did to this camera uh, was a bit better, uh, had more improvement. Now I heard the A6400 do have a overheating issue when you record 4K for a long period of time. Uh, the Sony, I suspect maybe the A6100 may have that issue as well but uh, you know what, if I hook up to external power and the monitor, I don't think that will be a problem anymore. How I know this is because I have a 5100 right now recording and there's no overheating issue whatsoever now. Um, even though we know that the Ace 5100 uh, you know, has an overheating issue, after like 24 minutes, it overheats and it stopped recording. But I was able to resolve that. So the A6100 will definitely have no issue with that. So it's a non-issue regarding overheating. Number 10, number 10 of course is the 4K 24 frames per second non-crop, so no cropping, okay? And it can do 1080p 120 frames per second. That's great because you can do uh, slow-mo, right? I mean, I don't normally do slow-mo as much. However, when you do do it, it looks fabulous. So there we go, it can do 1080p 120 frames per second. Great. Number 11, yes, it does have a built-in flash. Let me show you right now. There we go. Now, it's not the best quality of flash, but at least it's there, right? For example, if you're taking a picture in the dark and you know you don't want to increase your ISO too much, you press this little button here and the flash comes up and you can take it with the flash and you don't have to stretch your ISO too high. Well, then you'll get the flash look. I don't know if that's a good thing. Oh well, at least it has a flash. Number 12. Uh, 11 frames per second yes um, I don't know that's important for people for me uh, it's okay I mean I don't really take 11 frames per second uh, that often um, but because it has a fast autofocus 11 frames per second do come in handy when you're uh, you know taking a picture of fast moving objects especially when you're taking pictures of your kids running around you know 11 frames per second with amazing autofocus is yeah amazing <laughs> well that's the 12 reasons why I uh, bought the Sony A6100. There are two reasons that I didn't like about this camera. Um, now, probably there are a lot more. However, there are two that I was disappointed with Sony. And so number one, of course, is that this thing can only do one over 4,000 shutter speed, mechanical shutter speed. I have a Fujifilm X-T3 that can do one eight thousandth 
of a second. Even the Sony a6600 can only do one four thousand of a second, which was quite disappointing. You know, the Fujifilm can do one eight thousand of a second, and if you set that to electronic shutter, it's one thirty-two thousand of a second, which ah, that's incredible. So. That's when I, you know, I was disappointed with Sony that they only limit it to one over 4,000. Okay, and the second feature I did not like, of course, is the 8-bit feature. It's the 8-bit 422 output coming from this camera. The Fujifilm X-T3 that I own and the Panasonic GH4 can do 10-bit 422 output. This one can only do 8-bit, and so that was a bit disappointing. Even their A6600 uh, can only do 8-bit 422 output as well which I think Sony need to step up that game for the APS-C sensor because you know Fujifilm is already moving I would say far ahead in their APS-C camera line it's a catch up for Sony this time around however you know the A7S3 I think it's gonna be an amazing camera it's coming up soon hopefully um, that would do 10 bit 422 4K60 full frame so I'll, I'll be thinking about purchasing that maybe not anytime soon maybe another year or so maybe two years from now uh, when the price do come down uh, when you buy it used or something like that I would look into that however you know I'm okay with the 8-bit for this camera as long as you set up your composition and your lighting properly I don't think you would color grade too much anyway and 8-bit is more than adequate in fact it's 99% of the time it would be okay however you know you start to color grade you know to the extreme then this camera may not be the one that you want all right but you know for the price and everything that i just mentioned the 12 reasons i think it is amazing camera i would go with this camera a6100 over the a6400 because i don't need the s-log and i wouldn't go over the uh, a6600 because i don't need the uh, image stabilization either i do have a gimbal that i use using this with a gimbal is amazing so those are the 12 reasons why I end up um, buying this camera. Even though there's two reasons I hesitated in purchasing this camera, the 12 reasons was more than adequate to convince me to get the Sony a6100. All right, thanks for watching at tube.com.